Welcome to another episode of Reason Explained. Today, we are going to work on the backing track to one of my other videos that walk through the components of the SSL mixer in Reason 6. If you haven't checked it out yet, it's a great way to familiarize yourself with the mixer in Reason 6. In this video, we'll use Redrum for our beat and Kong for sampling, and then some basic compression and EQ, as well as high and low pass filters. So let's begin. First, let's create a combinator to keep everything nice and clean. Let's name the mix channel drums, and let's also name the combinator channel drums as well. Housekeeping is very important. Inside the combinator, let's create a six by two mixer, and then click on the mixer and create a redrum. To save time, I have previously saved this kit, but these are all from the factory sound bank in Reason. The kick sample is from the Next Step kit, and the hi-hat is also from the Next Step kit. For the snare, I'm using the SD7 Rare, and the clap is from the Boom kit. Last, I'm using the Sim 3 One Jazz for my crash. First, let's change the steps to 32 here. Let's select the kick drum and place the hit on one for the first 16 steps. Then let's flick the edit steps switch to edit steps 17 to 32 and add a hit on one, 11, and 14. Next, select your hi-hat and light up the odd numbers. Then flick your edit step switch again and do the same thing for your first set of steps. Next, I'll change the dynamic to soft and light up 14 and 16 and then change edit steps and do the same thing for this one as well. Okay, so let's add the snare in now. Select our snare, change the dynamic back to medium, and put a hit on 9, hit edit steps, and do 9. Now go up to our clap and let's do the same thing. Hit on 9, edit steps, hit on 9 again. Now let's click run and have a listen. And without the clap. And with the clap. Now for a little more housekeeping. Go to the sequencer window and up in the left corner, select block mode. Name your block and we'll call this one loop. Now go back to redrum, right click and select copy pattern to track. Now you can see our pattern is in the sequencer window. Clicking the edit mode in the left corner allows us to further manipulate the pattern if we want it. Now let's clean up the drums so they sit a little bit better in the mix. First, make sure you click this button here, which enables the pattern selection to play. If you don't, your mix will sound like poop on a stick. Let's go up to the mixer and adjust the low and high pass filters. So if we sweep the frequency knob, you can hear how the low pass filter rolls off everything to the right of where it's pointed. Now let's do the same with the high pass filter. At the low end, everything 60 hertz and under, you can't really hear, but you can feel it. Depending on your genre, you may want to add some of this. So if we scroll down the channel strip, we can click edit inserts in the insert section. And that will take us to the insert effects of our drum mix channel in the rack view. Let's right click inside the insert effects and create an M class equalizer. We're going to sweep the frequencies in order to bring out the kick and snare. Basically, I'm creating a spike in the low end, and then I'm going to sweep that around and find where it accents the kick drum the best. So I think right around 78 hertz sound best. So now I'm going to bring the spike down by lowering the gain, and I'm going to widen the cue to get some of the surrounding frequencies as well. I'm going to use the exact same method to bring out the snare. 
but I'm going to adjust the frequency to be in the high mid-range area and sweep through there. So I like it right around one and a quarter hertz. I think that sounds best. Again, we're just going to drop the gain down and widen the cue to pick up some surrounding frequencies and just accent the snare and clap a little bit. Now I'm going to right click on the equalizer and add an effect of an M-Class compressor. I'll quickly run through the layout of the M-Class compressor so you can understand how it works. You can boost your signal with the input gain. The threshold is a decibel value that tells the compressor when to begin compressing. Ratio tells the compressor how much of that signal should be compressed as it passes the threshold. The current setting of this ratio is 4 to 1. This means that for every 4 decibels above the threshold, it will compress by 1 decibel. The attack corresponds to how fast the compressor will react, and your release is how quick it will let go of that compression of the signal. Last is your output gain to bring up some of the signal that's been compressed. Turning the threshold down and the ratio all the way up will create a pumping effect with the compression. Bringing the ratio down will limit how much compression is going to happen. Also adjusting the threshold will make the compressor not as sensitive. So I've settled in on a threshold of about minus 17 decibels, and then a ratio of about 4 to 1, and then I boost the gain by about 2 decibels. So what I've done is lightly compressed the snare mainly, and just the very top end of my kicks. Last, I'm going to right click on the compressor, and add effects, and a M-Class Stereo Imager. This is a nice way to widen or narrow your low and high bands, and also cross out any frequencies that you don't like. So we can solo the high band, and then move the X over frequency knob, and show how it can notch out some of the frequencies. Kind of like a high and low pass filter. And then same with the low band. I remember when I was sweeping with the EQ for the snare, that around 2 kHz I didn't like the way it sounded, I'll use the X over frequency to notch it out. So I'm going to narrow the low band so it's not floating around in the mix. And then I'll widen the high band and you can hear how it kind of contains the sound. With these drums, I'm using EQ and compression as a way to just finely accent the sound. Now, let's do some sampling. The first thing we need to do is wire the sample correctly. So we're going to tab around to the back of the master section, select the audio in out button. We're going to disconnect the cables from the sampling input and disconnect the master out cables and put them into the sampling input. Then we're going to monitor with the control room out back where we disconnected the master cables from. Now let's tab back around, and let's open up an instance of Kong. In the bottom left corner, let's click Show Drum and FX, and add an NN Nano Sampler. Now let's go up to our redrum, select our crash, and solo the crash, and now let's go back down to Kong, and hit the Sample button. Now let's trigger the crash. And let's hit edit. And here's our sample. So let's adjust the start and end times so we get it to the right length that we want. And then we'll click crop. Now let's normalize the clip. And I'm going to reverse this.
All right, let's name it reverse crash. And as you can see, our sample is now in the NN Nano sampler right there in position one, which corresponds to drum pad one. So if we trigger drum pad one, there's our sampled reverse crash. Check out the other videos on my channel, Reason Explained. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments. Join me in part two as I use Thor to make a growly bass and a Nintendo Coins type sound. And remember, please subscribe.